Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. And today, today Jeannie Young is gonna show you all how to make a sweet Southern fried corn. This recipe is absolutely amazing. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients. You can make this dish, have it on your dinner table in a half an hour. Absolutely you can. Now, in this dish, I will be using pork. I will be using some pork bacon. If you are that person that says, Gina, I don't eat pork or I don't eat pork bacon. Here's the thing, you use you some turkey bacon. Absolutely you can, or just omit the bacon and the dish will still be delicious, okay? Trust me when I tell you this. Now, I'm gonna show you what we're all gonna need and I'm gonna show you how to cut the corn off of the cob because when I'm making this dish when you are making this dish you want to use the freshest of ingredients you want to make sure that you're using corn on the cob now here's the thing you can make this using canned corn but I don't suggest it I don't suggest it you can use this dish using frozen corn but I don't suggest it okay this right here, this bad boy right here I highly suggest that you shuck you some corn Shuck you some corn. Take the time to make it taste the best using the freshest of ingredients. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna need. We're gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how to cut the kernels off of the cob. Let's get started. Here are the ingredients. You will need a bell pepper, green and red. If you wanted to use yellow or orange, that would be fine as well. You will need a onion, you will need some butter, or you can use margarine. And I'm gonna use four pieces of bacon, salt and pepper. I'm gonna use a little bit of jalapeno. Now, here's the thing. If you don't wanna use the jalapeno, don't use it. It really is that simple, okay? Now me, when I cut down into this jalapeno, I will take the seeds out and I will take the white vein out of here. And the reason for doing that is because I don't wanna burn anybody's pants off. I'm not, I just want a little bit of spice in the back of my throat, just a little bit of spice, not too much to where it's gonna to be too hot for anyone. Cause you all that know me, I'm not really a fan of hot things. I don't like hot things. So I'm gonna make sure that I take the seeds and the veins out so that it's just nice and mild. And you can see beside the jalapeno pepper, I have one clove of garlic. You definitely need to use garlic. Make sure you go out and get you a fresh clove of garlic, okay? Don't use the garlic powder for this dish. Let me wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to wash my hands because my phone that was just sitting here, you all see me move it. Anytime you have to touch something else other than your food, you always want to wash your hands. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I've shucked the corn already. I have a bowl here. All right, and I have a little bowl. Put that little bowl inside of your big bowl. What is Jeanetta Young doing? Well, I'm trying to make something that my corn can sit on and I need a bowl that my corner that my kernels can fall into so we're going to try to do this you take your knife and you cut along your cob just like so and your kernels will fall into the bowl and really it's that simple. Can you all see this? I know my hand is in the way, but I'm hoping that you all can see this, okay? Just like this. And really it's that simple, okay? Now, if you were to make cream corn, I'm gonna show you something. So let me show you what we've done. See how I got nice, fresh kernels, beautiful kernels. That's how you cut it off. Inside of here, I'm just gonna show you, but I'm not gonna use it. Inside of here, if I were to go any deeper, let's see, if I were to go any deeper than the kernels were, inside of here, I'm just gonna show you something. Inside of here, that's milk. That's what you call corn milk. You would use that if you were to make a cream style corn and it's absolutely amazing. I'm not gonna use the milk that's down in there today because I'm not making cream style uh, corn. 
But if I was, I would scrape the inside of that and get all that goodness. It's beautiful and it helps you to make the perfect cream style corn. I don't know about you all, but I absolutely adore cream style corn. Yes, I do. See, look, this here, this is really simple. Really, really simple. I hope you all are having a great day today. I'm starting to pick up a little bit more energy. Thank the good Lord Jesus. God, with listen here, with God on my side, all things is possible. You know, we've been moving, those of you that are familiar with me, um, we've been moving, and I'm finally starting to pick up a little bit of energy so that I can get back in my kitchen and give you all back-to-back -back videos as usual. And I'm so excited to be back in the kitchen with you all, sharing my gift from God with you all. Hope you all are having a blessed, beautiful day, a great work day as well. See, just cut it just like this. Nothing hard. And you just kind of go along, right along the cob. Because the thing is, if you go in too far, that knife will let you know that you're, you know, you're hitting the wrong spot on the corn, on the, on the cob. Because it won't let you go in. But if you just go along it, this is what you're left with. Beautiful. All right, I have two more cobs. I'm going to do that off the camera, and I'll come right back. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead. Give that garlic a whack. All right, and if this garlic had the skin on it, that nice whack with the knife will help for the skin to come off. I think I got kind of smart. I went out and I bought the garlic. Let me show you. I bought the fresh garlic that is already peeled. So we don't have to deal with that. When you're making fried corn, you always want to use fresh garlic. Fresh garlic is going to give it an absolutely amazing taste. And listen here, you don't have to use a whole bunch. One, just one clove will, do, one clove will give you that flavor that you're looking for. Absolutely it will. Okay, what I need to do, I have the bacon here. It looks like I have, okay, I thought I had, yeah, I got four pieces. Let's go ahead and put that bacon right into this pan here. Can you all see? And we want to fry this bacon up nice and crispy. If you're going to omit the bacon, never mind this part. But me personally, I want that bacon. I want that crispy bacon in mine. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. This right here is like a firework. It's like a party in your mouth. It makes your taste buds, when you taste this, your taste buds say, wait, 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 wait. Yes, I'm so serious. I'm silly, but I'm serious. It is, it's like a firework in your mouth. Absolutely amazing flavors in this dish. Watch all the way to the end of this video and you let me know if your mouth is watering anytime during this video. Let me know because I'm curious. I'm telling you one thing. I'm telling you one thing. I haven't even started the dish yet and my mouth is watering already. I'm so ready for this dish. Here's what we're gonna do. Chop you up some peppers. You don't have to use all the peppers. I'm gonna use that much of the red. And what I have left over, I normally will put the peppers in a freezer bag, throw them in the freezer and use them for a later date. So never throw away that extra piece of the pepper that's left. Never throw that away. You can always use it the next day or just throw it in the freezer. You know, use it for soup or whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and chop this up. You want to kind of do medium pieces, not too, not too big and not too small. You know, you don't want to bite down into a huge piece of bell pepper, right? This is what we're going to do. And this corn doesn't take any time to cook, okay? So now, what will happen is this video is much longer than the actual time that it takes to cook this, okay? Remember that. Because I'm doing lots of talking during this video. I'm doing a demonstration on how to, and I'm editing and different things like that. So it will seem like this takes forever, but during the editing process, you, you don't. It, it doesn't only take 
but at the most a half an hour to cook this dish. Really, it does. I'm just making sure that my bacon is turned on so the bacon can start getting nice and crispy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little bit, just a little bit of our bacon grease and it gives an amazing flavor. Yes, it does. Use some of that bacon grease. And we're gonna use a little bit of this butter that we have. Like I said, if you wanted to use margarine, that's fine as well. Either or will give great flavor. Someone told me in a message today, they said, did anybody see her struggling to turn the stove on? Well, here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest with you all. This is a brand new stove and I gotta get used to which knob goes to which eye. Absolutely I do. And so, I'm gonna keep turning those knobs on that stove until I can figure it out. And pretty soon, I'll know this new stove just like I did my old stove. No problem there, right? <laughs> really, it's that simple. Shoot, I would turn one eye on and the other one would, would come on. <laughs> All right, there's that. And I think that's enough. That's enough color. It's gonna give great flavor as well as the color. So we have the green and we have the red. And then we're gonna cut some onion. First thing that we're gonna do is cook our garlic. You wanna cook your garlic in just a tad bit of oil to get oil, uh, to get your oil, uh, whoop, I can't say it guys. Let me, let, me, let me try that again. You wanna put the garlic in first with a little bit of oil in the pan to infuse the oil that's in the pan. Infuse it with that garlic flavor. There we go, that's better. <laughs> bacon is starting to smell absolutely amazing go ahead and cut you some onion and here's the thing you don't need a lot just a little bit of go a long way in this dish okay so I'm gonna use round about that much round about that much I hope that you all are having a beautiful day today a beautiful work day as well I'm so glad to be able to be back in the kitchen again. I felt like I was gone forever when I was moving. I missed three days of videos and I felt like I was gone for eternity. <laughs> I could not wait to get back into this kitchen. Well, here I am. Back again, back to back videos as always. As always promised. Unless I don't feel good, you all are going to get some great content. Back to back videos. Amen. All right, there's that. Beautiful. You have your onion. You have your peppers. Any color peppers that you want to use would be just fine. If you just wanted to use green, that's fine as well. Or if you wanted to use the orange or the yellow, that's also fine. Okay, let's come over here and let's give our bacon. A turn. I want to turn the bacon. Well, it doesn't need to be turned. It's just fine. Let's pay some attention to our jalapeno. The bigger the jalapeno, the hotter. This right here is all I'm going to use. Take those seeds out. If you have kids in your family or someone that doesn't like the heat, be sure not to use it. Don't use this. Okay, like I said, we're not trying to burn anybody's pants off with this jalapeno, but I do like the little bit of spice that it gives for sure. Okay, so you wanna chop this up kind of fine. Fine as you can. No one wants to bite down into a huge piece of jalapeno. Now we're gonna saute this jalapeno when we saute the onions and the peppers, okay? So it's okay to mix this right in with your peppers. Beautiful. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna make some sweet southern fried corn. Be right back. I gotta wash my hands since I dealt with this. I would hate to get that in my eyes. Okay, 
Okay, our jalapeno is sliced. Bring all of your ingredients next to you. All right, come over here. There's our bacon cooking up. We have our big pan that we're gonna use. And you can see I put just a little bit of oil, just a tiny bit. Don't get crazy with the oil because we are gonna use bacon grease and a little bit of butter later. That's why I don't want, to, want you to use too much of this oil. Let's cook your, get your garlic going. Okay, everyone, once your garlic starts to, once you can smell it really prevalent, and you can smell it all in the air, and right before it starts to get golden brown, well, right before it gets golden brown, you want to put your onions and your tricolored peppers in and your jalapeno peppers as well, and you want to start to saute them down. The reason why you don't want to put the peppers, onions, and jalapeno in with the corn is because the corn is not going to cook long. So you don't want to overcook it. And you want to make sure your vegetables are cooked. So that's why you heat, that's why you cook your vegetables first. Once your vegetables are almost cooked, then you put your corn in, all right? And make sure, make sure you season this dish. You always want to use salt and pepper. And if those of you wanted to put maybe a teaspoon or just a pinch of sugar in, absolutely you could, okay? But, um, all depends on the sweetness of your corn because I have a nice sweet corn here. All right, I'm just waiting on my pan to heat up. My bacon is almost done. And what we're going to do with this bacon here is we're just, you can crumble it or you can chop it. I'm going to chop mine. I actually should have chopped the bacon up first, but that's okay. Hey, listen here, it's all going in the same place and it's going to taste good. You hear me? It's gonna taste good, my word. My bacon is actually done. So I'm just gonna set it aside. I wanna wipe my stove down. Definitely wipe my stove down. Once the garlic starts to cook up, I'll be right back. Okay, I can smell our garlic very well. It's almost to the point to where it's getting nice and golden brown. I've taken our bacon out and I've set it on a plate. Now, let's put our jalapeno in so that it can cook, as well as your peppers and onions, just like so. Ooh-wee, I'm excited. I have, these are beautiful smells coming out of my kitchen. Mm, mm, mm. I tell you one thing, since I've been in this new house, my neighbors, I know that my neighbors have to be smelling this beautiful smells coming out of my kitchen. I know they do, because I have my windows open, and I know they are wondering, like, what are these people cooking? Because the aroma is absolutely amazing. <laughs> There's nothing like walking past or riding your bike past a house and you can literally smell breakfast cooking or you can smell fried chicken cooking through their windows. Absolutely amazing. Now these vegetables right here will probably cook for around about six minutes and then I'll put my beautiful fresh corn in. I might cook them a little bit longer because I want for the onions to get nice and translucent. And what translucent is, is where your onions start to get clear in color and your vegetables will start to get a little deeper in color. Nothing soggy. They will still have some texture, some bite to them, but they're not going to be soggy. See this here? And you want to go ahead and season your vegetables. Don't get crazy with the salt, okay? Because we'll go in later and we'll season later. I'm not even going to use all of that. I'm just going to use this pitch. And I'm happy with that. Now later I'll go back after I taste everything and I'll re-season. Black pepper? You have to have black pepper. Black pepper has antioxidants in it and it makes everything taste good, right? Absolutely it does. Okay. Soon I will have my lighting 
over here at this new house. So I don't have the greatest of the lighting right now, but I'll be back in effect as soon as I get all of my stuff over here. Box lights and you'll have a little bit better view. Because I'm really not sure, looking in my camera, I can't really tell how bright everything is. Our onions are cooking up just beautifully. Okay, everyone, it's been seven minutes, and my vegetables are nice and sauteed. All right, let me show you what they look like. See that there? Beautiful. Okay, so then, put your fresh corn right on in there. If you're that person that wanted to use the milk from the cob, then absolutely you could. Absolutely you can. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I do scrape out the milk of the corn on the cob, uh, when I'm making cream corn. But I'm not looking for a creamy consistency with this fried southern sweet corn dish. Okay? Look at this. Look how beautiful. How many of you are corn lovers? I don't know about you all, but I love corn. Corn is one of my favorite vegetables. I love it. Absolutely I do. My goodness, look at this. See the beautiful color that you achieve? Oh yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. hmm i am going to put a little bit of bacon grease in there. Don't get carried away with the bacon grease. Don't, don't put it all in there. <laughs> Just a little bit. Maybe a teaspoon and a half of it. And that's it. Now, what I've done is I've chopped up the bacon. I started to cut it, but it just started to chop up itself. Okay? Put that bacon in there. Great flavor. We're going to put butter in here. It's going to be a nice amount of butter, but here's the thing. You need butter. You need that butter. All right? There we go. And then bacon grease. Just a little bit of this beautiful bacon grease. That's it. That's all you need. Mm. Now my mouth is watering. My goodness, my mouth has been watering since I started this video. You hear me? My word. And I'm going to give this a taste. And sometimes I feel like if my corn isn't sweet enough, then I will use just a pinch, just a pinch of sugar. But I've tasted this corn already, and it's nice and sweet. I'm going to go ahead and season this. And we're going to let this cook up until our kernels are done. I'm going to put a nice amount of cracked black pepper on here. Once again, and you want to salt your corn. You have to use some salt up against the sweetness of the corn to kind of balance it out, if that makes any sense. Use a lot of black pepper. That's enough. Beautiful. And just let it fry. You turn this on a medium-high heat. Don't turn it on low. Don't turn it up on high because you'll burn it. Don't turn it on low because you'll steam it. Turn it on medium high and that's just right. And just right means that it's going to fry in that bacon grease and that butter. It's going to fry. It's going to get nice and beautiful. Oh my goodness. The smell is amazing. Look how beautiful. I think for dinner that we're going to have fried chicken. So this just might be our side dish that we have alongside of our chicken. My goodness, look at this. Hooey. Mm, mm, mm. Girl, mm, mm, mm. You all never made this before. You better make you some. Absolutely, you should. Woo! Looking good, Gina. Looking good, baby. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Ooh, All right, I'm just going to cook it for a while, and then when I come back, I'm going to let you know exactly how long it took to cook. We're going to give this a try, and I'm going to let you know if I feel like I need a little bit of sugar. But if not, then we won't put any in there. This corn right here has cooked 
for around about 12 to 15 minutes. It's perfect. The corn still has some type of crunch. It's not mushy, tasty. You can taste the butter. You can taste the salt and the pepper. You can taste the garlic and the bacon. You can taste the bell peppers. Everything you can taste. This is a party in your mouth. This is amazing. Now there's so many different names for this dish here. There's a lot of people that call this Fiesta uh, corn, Southwest corn, different names. But me personally, I call it sweet fried Southern style corn. Let's dig in. But before we dig in, I wanna bring you a close up. Man, that pan is heavy, you hear me? Look at this. Nice, beautiful close up. We're going to say a blessing over our corn, and we're going to dig in. I'm going to let you all know what it tastes like. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. We thank you for this meal, the roof over our head, and the food that you give us, and the love that you give us daily. We say amen once again, Jesus. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's go ahead. Here's what I want to do. You all that know me, you know I love to use parsley. I feel like the parsley will give a nice, beautiful color going all throughout. I know we put the peppers in, but this just makes it nice and beautiful, right? It always does. See the difference? <laughs> I know I see the difference. Put you, some, put you some parsley in there. Amen, if I didn't say amen. Let's totally dig in. I'm so excited. My goodness, am I excited? Woo wee! Mm, mm, mm. I gotta blow it because I don't want to burn the daylights out of my tongue. You all taste the first bite. Let me know what you what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and what your take on sweet southern fried corn is how you eat yours what you pair your corn up with what your experience with fried corn was give this a taste see that's right here mm. this is so comfortable oh this is so comforting Mmm, 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 so delicious. Mmm, 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 you better make you some. Mmm, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time. I upload one of these awesome recipes. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night. One more bite. One more bite. Mmm. 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 Mmm.